the landlords are the ones paying the property taxes to the town of Hadley. So I think, you know, there are a variety of reasons to have a, a program like this. We're not, we're not trying to be the savior for everybody by any means, but if this program, whether it's a hundred thousand or fifty thousand um, dollars, as Dylan said, maybe fifty thousand, fine, wh whatever. If that's something that's more agreeable to people, because it's a smaller percentage of the trust, could just be there um, and only obviously go to people who can prove um, that they meet the criteria, and that means that they have to be able to show direct impact due to uh, COVID nineteen, and it's going to be vetted by a third party. I, I understand. Molly, would, Molly we're, we're kind of blaming COVID-19, but there was a, uh, a proclamation, I think, by Governor Baker saying that uh, you don't have to pay your rent. So there are people that uh, are still employed, and, but they're not paying their rent uh, because the, uh, the state say you don't have yeah, to. Don't, Joe, a lot of that stuff expires on December 31st. So I think well, that's where this and, program and, comes well, in. And well, David but Phil just that is happening. And the, the uh, other point I want to make is, am I correct in assuming that this is going to go directly to the landlord? That is yes. correct. I mean, it's a rent check, yeah. Now, this is being rather patronizing, I think, on, on your part, in as much as you don't trust the people who are down in their luck with the money. And if we're gonna, we're really subsidizing the landlord. No, well, Joe, I, I, I'd look at it a little bit differently. You know, again, I understand, I understand why you're saying that, but I think it goes to the intent of the program. Um, the intent of the program is to keep people in their homes. So the best way to, to handle the money is to make sure that they're, it's not that, that the, you wouldn't be necessarily trusting the people to go run off and go Christmas shopping with it. I think the idea is that you don't want to give the landlord the opportunity to say, you didn't pay your rent and I'm throwing you out because by the way, um, you know, the opportunity for some rents around here have uh, actually gone up recently, right? Because of people moving to the area. So we, we certainly don't want to incent a landlord to shut the door on somebody and kick somebody out because they might be able to actually get a better rental rate from somebody either. So um, it's, it's not really an issue of trust. It's just what's the objective of the program? Let's keep people in their homes. Um, and the way to do that is to have the money go right to the landlord. But some uh, and one uh, of the uh, wait, wait, Mike, uh, David Phil had a comment. Let him speak real quick. So uh, I know there's a lot we can debate on this. Um, you know, kind of what I had in my mind was something to hold us over until Springtown meeting. And I know uh, Dylan and I think Molly mentioned $50,000. And I think an amount of $50,000 out of the trust with an expiration date to utilize those funds by say May 30th, May 31st, whatever, um, is reasonable to see what happens. And then if we need, you know, if there's a demand for it, we can go back to town meeting floor and see if the taxpayers will support, you know, throwing in another hundred thousand dollars or whatever the demand is on town meeting floor. And, you know, that'll give us an indication as a committee as well. If we go to town meeting and it's overwhelmingly rejected, then we can look at that as trustees and think, well, maybe we shouldn't fund this anymore. Maybe it's not supported by the taxpayers. But what it does is it gives us a chance to get to town meeting. And, you know, $50,000, I think you said $3,000 a person is what the rent reimbursement is. So you're talking about 16 people or so. Um, if Amherst was able to whittle it down to 22 based on their population, uh, we probably won't even come close to 16 just based on the, the, the ratios. So we're probably talking realistically seven or eight people that would qualify if you're just, if we look at similar rental numbers and qualifications. So just something to, you know. To, you're looking for 50 then? Yeah, I think 50 is reasonable if that is so where, where is the money held if the trustees vote to make the money available i think we have to work out those details i don't know if that's completely worked out if capv gets the funding and then gets it back I, i'm not quite sure how that works out i don't know if you guys know those details and then bill has a comment too 
Sure. A um, couple of things. First, um, uh, I think David's suggestion is good. If we get if we get to annual town meeting with a track record, that's going to make a lot more compelling case one way or the other than everybody sitting around saying what if or maybe. So uh, that's a reason to do it because there doesn't seem to be any other way to test the waters. Um, the money uh, will be held by the town treasurer in a town account. Um, as I said, I have some paperwork that I have to straighten out between uh, Barry Roberts' attorney, the planning board, and the ZBA. When we, doc when we permitted this arrangement, uh, the paperwork, I, I, have to, I have to get back into the files to see what, what the story was. The ZBA's decision was written up, but it apparently was recorded. Uh, Tom Reedy couldn't find a copy of a planning board decision. And I obviously am kind of constrained by what I have access to right now. So there are a few steps to be taken. But there's no question that the money which is presently in the Bacon Wilson Client Trust Funds account is payable to us and will be payable to us. And it will go to town hall and any disbursements from that account will be made by the treasurer. So, And, 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 the, and, and will the treasurer be issuing 1099s to the landlord? Yes. And Dylan, you, met, you said that this is not taxable to the tenant. Is there a tax opinion to that effect? The CAPV director that we were talking to said that it wouldn't be taxable. But uh, is he a tax if, attorney? I would like to get a second opinion as well. I agree. I yeah, think it's I, taxable to the, I think it's taxable to the tenant. I'm sorry. I've seen things like this before in my, over my career. And Mike, I actually um, I talked to a couple of uh, accountants in the area, and they both said that there are other, there are other government programs similar to this um, and the uh, individuals are not taxed, the landlord pays the tax. But, you know, again, we'll make sure well, that the, this the, all is clarified. The qualifying term being similar to. Exactly. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is like a distribution, I would say, from the trust for the benefit of someone, which is taxable. I, my opinion is it doesn't matter. It's not our problem if it's taxable. It's, it's up to the- Well, I just wanted to point out that Dylan said it isn't, and I, I'm not sure he's correct. So I, you know, I, I appreciate your position, Dylan, but I wish you wouldn't give us ta tax advice. So, so coming with like all that information, would anybody like to make a motion um, about um, proceeding with this option? And then well, we could bring it up more for discussion. I want, to, I want some clarification, Christian. The presentation that was going to be made at the uh, special town meeting that now is going to be forwarded to the annual town meeting, this was CPA money, wasn't it? Originally, we were going to do CPA money, which, as Bill discussed earlier in the meeting, was so, something that... the CPA money, we haven't incorporated that money. The CPA has to delegate that money to come to the trust. That's completely out of our funding now. Yeah. So but, but that's not what we're comparing what we were going to do to what we can actually do right now. What we can actually do right now is use money from the affordable housing trust. Christian, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we earmark uh, fifty thousand uh, dollars for rental relief uh, with an expiration date for utilization by. There's thirty one days in May, right? Yes. yes. Now, would, that, would that be subject to a reversal if we get an opinion from town council that this is not something the trust can do? Yeah, let them finish there. Let them finish. So, okay, so. Uh, <laughs> with a expiration date of May 31st, 2021, and uh, that with the understanding that all unused funds will be returned to the trust. David, where is this money? Wait a minute. Let him finish his motion. And that the uh, this will be subject to review by town council, of course. And then we also need to, you know, decide on the uh, the criteria for eligibility. I know that Dylan and, and Molly had 
whatever that organization they're working with. We, we just need to kind of go over that. And so we have an understanding, but this money will be coming in my mind out of the money from the Barry Roberts development, not the CPA uh, affordable housing money. In, 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 in my opinion, that should be something for Springtown meeting to decide on whether to spend that hundred thousand dollars there. So that's, that's my long convoluted motion. <laughs> well, that's I, I've made longer and more convoluted ones, so I, I think I've got it. I will that's, second that motion. Right. Discussion. Okay. Now we can have for discussion. Yep. Where is the money coming from? Is it coming from the CPA? Joe, oh, trust. Joe, they were asking for the CPA a hundred thousand, but they didn't get to the floor of the meeting. So now they're changing. The, the, that's go, that's gone. That's dead. Now they're saying until next meeting can we get some from the affordable housing trust so this is it's apples and oranges well if they're making the decision they're voting on it now they're saying uh we want you to pay for it but we will still have the control over it and i mean if it's coming from cpa money they have to vote to give it to us it's not coming from cpa this it, is not it doesn't matter where the money's coming from, the way I read the Affordable Housing Trust. Once the money is in the Affordable Housing Trust, we treat it as Affordable Housing Trust money. I agree. And so it doesn't really matter the funding source directly because we have under section four, how we can spend the money and what it can be spent on. Whether it's CPA money or Affordable Housing Trust Fund, I mean, Barry Roberts money, we have the criteria on what it can be for. And I, if we're looking for town council approval or verification, we can or cannot use it. And if we can't do it, then this whole motion that David just made is moot. Well, I, I, I agree with you, but the CPA money, we just cannot go in there and reach it and take away. They have to vote. The CPA has to vote and take their... They're, uh, yeah, and we don't have off the we're not we're not we're using any fund. CPA funds right now. Yeah. We're right. using Barry right. Roberts fund money. Yeah, yeah let's wipe CPA. Yeah, I, thought, I don't think we should be calling it Barry Roberts money. Uh, I think we should call it trust money. Yeah, it's the money that is currently in the trust. Exactly we're just trying to, we're just trying to differentiate the source. That's all. So will there be two articles presented to the town meeting? CPA article and the trust fund article, or will this, they withdraw their? requests for spending the CPA money. We're gonna use this as a trial and see if we can, the program works if we get applicants and if we run out of funding, it can go to town meeting floor well, and we can try to fund it through CPA. But if we don't run out of funding from this $50,000 David just made a motion for, then there's no reason to take it to CPA. Talking about the sunsetting of this, you know, I'm sure everybody, as I have, is reading about the COVID vaccine. And clearly, uh, if it's working. And if herd immunity is finally here, shouldn't that be a definitive point at which this program sunsets because COVID is no longer an issue? And, you know, if at that point in time you can't get a job in the Happy Valley, then Well, my, yeah, Mark, Mark has a question too, I think. So I'll let him. Yeah, if I could get a question in. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing Joe's question and it raises a question in my mind. I don't know if I missed anything. So we started with a $100,000 CPA article that didn't get voted on at the meeting. Now we're, you know, forget about that. Now we're asking, or now they're asking for 50,000 from the Affordable Housing Trust. If we vote yes, and then this is then, then we have to check out, make sure everything's legal and, and all that. And it goes ahead. Is there a thought or an effort that at, at the spring town meeting, in addition to there being a CPA article for uh, for another hundred thousand. Is there been discussion or thought about a vote, an article to have CPA 
replace the housing, the affordable housing 50,000 as a transfer. Is, is, is that even in the equation or no? Because I think that kind of what Joe, at least what I read into Joe's question is, is there, is there a thought that this 50,000 out of the not to be called Barry Roberts fund would be replenished, <laughs> okay. could be replenished from the CPA? To, to me, that's something we could do as a trust. We could ask for that money, but that would be CPA money that's allocated for affordable housing. So it's kind of like, are we asking for CPA dollars to fund the affordable housing trusts? more is, than a reimbursement for this one program we're doing. You, that would be you don't need our, our affordable housing trust to present it to the town meeting. You're doing it through the CPA. But they want the money now. No, That's no, the point. They no, want no. it now. They've so. got it now. The CPA has the money. No, but, but, we the CPA, money. but we can't get the town vote. But C CPA can't be expended without a town meeting vote. Which means that that's not happening until May, maybe June, when we can have an annual town meeting at this point. So this, well, clearly this wasn't the intent of the insurance trust. I mean, and I was the person that was a big proponent of the insurance trust. The argument was made that it was too complicated and, you know, it's going to take too much time. We're going to have to pay trustees. Well, we're going to be paying uh, Dylan and his crew. But, uh, you know, these are extraordinary times. And uh, and uh, I can I can vote for this motion if, if there's some way we can get the money back from uh, from uh, CPA funds in the future that's fine but there's got to be a sunset on this and you know we it can't be going if there's here if herd immunity emerges we because the whole purpose of it if we if we had an economic recession a bad one would you be here asking us for money to help people pay the rent. So, uh, did, did you have like, an ending date on your emotion? There is May thirty first, twenty twenty one. Okay. The only uh, way I would I would support this motion is if that the CPA and we can't tell them to withdraw their motion. We're substituting our motion for their motion, but if both of them are going to go before the town meeting, that's double dipping. No, but, Joe, this, this is not going before town meeting. We have the authority to spend this money, or at least we do believe that we have the authority. I thought no money could be expended without going before the town meeting oh, in our trust. The, 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 way the, the way the affordable housing trust reads, the affordable housing trust, affordable housing trustees have the authority to spend between five and up to $10,000, depending what they're spending it on. Anything more than that requires Board of Selectmen approval or a vote of town meeting. So the Board of Selectmen can approve expenditure, large expenditures of money, and town meeting can also expend. So one or both can, ex can expend authorized. Yeah. Yeah, and so this, this, this isn't considered an expenditure of $50,000. You're only going to be expending a thousand dollars at a time so it doesn't even require the, the board of selectmen to vote on it i don't think who's going to be the authority that's going to uh negotiate who's eligible and who isn't eligible did you read the document that bill sent uh, that pioneer, was it called but, pioneer valley we have no idea who this person is we have not interviewed C community action pioneer valley is going to be the administrator, Joe, Joe, yeah, Joe, and they're going to charge 12% to do this. That's usurious. It's, it's not, <laughs> it sure is. 12%? You are being evicted. Bill, I, can get, I, can get you, I can get you a mortgage for two and a half, but uh, how, how long has this outfit been around? Community action? Yeah. Uh, community Action, um, the current director of Community Action, I, I believe, is Claire Higgins, the former mayor of Northampton. Um, community Action has been in existence across the Commonwealth for decades. I couldn't tell you how long, um, but they're, they're the ones, Mike, who run the uh, fuel assistance program, as an example. They run many programs, but uh, they're up in um, 
Franklin County. They're uh, out in uh, their offices, main offices in Greenfield. Um, but they do a lot in the way of preschool, early childhood ed, um, you know, that level of community programming. And where do they get their funding, Molly? Um, well, uh, community action, I, I know on um, Giving, Giving Tuesday every year, they do a major plea. So uh, in large part, they're funded with private donations, but I believe that they also get support from organizations like the United Way and I'm sure grant monies as well. So how much do they have in their treasury right now? Do you know that? Dylan, how much money do they have in the bank? I don't know. How many employees do you have? Uh, they're a very viable organization, Mike, if that's what you're asking. They were formed in 1964 out of the Economic Opportunity Act passed by U.S. Congress and federally funded uh, okay. all of the nations. Michael, were you on the board when Amy Feiden gave, it, uh, Amy Feiden gave a presentation? She is a, a board member of, I think, this organization. And it, it sounded like a realtor making every time there's a transaction, they get 12% of it. No. Um, How do they no. get 12% of what? So this is, this is part of the negotiation. Um, the, basically what community action is trying to do is they're just trying to cover their operating costs. So again, as Dylan just pointed out, this organization has been around since 1964. Um, and they already had a day job, so to speak, okay? Um, then, you know, this situation came along and um, with all of these municipalities across the Commonwealth trying to figure out, okay, if we're gonna have a rental relief program, how do we handle it? And they started reaching out to organizations like the Valley CDC, Community Action, a handful of others out there, the um, Franklin Regional Development Authority, you know, organizations that already had an infrastructure in place where they can bas basically vet applicants. They're used to dealing with um, income verification and all of those things. So what community action is merely saying is that there's a certain price point where they, they need to cover their cost because they are actually um, going to be handling this for the city of East Hampton. Um, and I'm trying to remember who else. Um, but they're actually having to hire somebody. So they're not trying to gouge us. They're not trying to make a profit. They're actually a nonprofit agency. But when did, when did they get paid their 12% when we vote the 50,000 and they take 6,000? No, they're not, they're not, that'll all be negotiated, Mike. Um, once the program is up and running, it would be like any other consultant well, where they would be paid, paid as you go. The CDC, Molly, also keeps track of uh, 40B housing, for example, it's a, it was, Barry Roberts was going to build some houses in lieu of contributing to this uh, fund, but it became so complicated and so expensive. It's, uh, it's a nonprofit organization, but so is some Blue Cross and Blue Shield, but the big dog gets, uh, what, $30 million. So. If they don't find any applicants who are qualified, then they're going to expend zero dollars and that's they, they're going to get 12 percent of zero. So it's they're getting 12 percent of the people that we're trying to help stay in Hadley because they're because they're protecting our taxpayers interests. How many hours or how, how how many hours, I guess, is the question. Do you do you spend, Dylan, on each applicant deciding if they're going to make it or not make it? It seems like you've got to acquire a whole lot of information. And uh, along with that question, how do you know they're a resident of the town they live in if they live there? Or do you look at the voting records? What if they're students? CAP, uh, CAPV will be doing the administration, so that won't be anything so, that I tell them how, how to do so, it. So, but so will, what, if, what if they can't pay the rent, but they never had a job, and their parents aren't giving them the money anymore because the parents don't have a job? How does that work if they don't right. have a job? I, I just they, feel like we're getting, getting a little off track. track. I yeah. Just, we're getting a little off track, so. Well, I just I, want to point out some of the issues here. Mm -hmm. This is not an easy process going to go around through. and around, but it's either do we want to do this? Well, if I don't get an answer, it, I can't vote for it. That's the Michael, problem. I, Michael, I think Molly said 
that they have to prove that they can't pay because of COVID. It's not like they couldn't pay before. This, this isn't a free, but you can't walk okay. in. You can't move in now. You have to have already been living here and we're trying to yeah. keep you. You can't come here because, oh, there's free rent in Hadley. There's yeah. qualifications which were written in to her proposal. Because, well, as, as Joe Zagronik pointed out, this could open up a can of worms for some landlords. Uh, Is it going to be public information how people are going to qualify? Are their names going to become public? Once it That's a detail. I don't know. All right. Well, I just am going to move this forward. So um, all those in favor. And I can do a roll call vote because that's yeah. going to be better for, uh, vote for taking this. But uh, I'll just go in the order on my screen here. Dwyer? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Maximowski? Yes. Zagrodnik? No. Uh, Mike? Yes. David? Yes. And Mark? Yes. So... Six four, one against. Motion passes. I mean, you know, we we saw how this money that came from the CARES Act or whatever it is, multi million dollar corporations were were applying for funds. I wouldn't be surprised if Amherst College got some money out of that. Yeah, you know, just when, when there's money, free money available, and this is my concern, they just come out of the woodwork. You know. <laughs> was the answer? You do have to show income. I, I understand. What David is trying to do. David, David Phil is trying to be a, uh, a kind of a perfect politician, um, saying that money will become available at fifty thousand as opposed to one hundred thousand. But nevertheless, there's still so many unanswered questions. The vote, in my mind, for something that we have. So many unanswered questions. Uh, uh, no, seems, I agree. I agree. Like, I agree. Like, I agree but these are. Yeah, one. we're not. We're not going to solve it on a Zoom meeting right now. So um, I do need to get going pretty soon, and it looks like Mark has to, a meeting at six thirty as well. So is there any other business we want to cover here right now? Um, I think that covered everything we wanted to go through. Excuse me, David. Go ahead. What, what's the next step here? Do, I assume this has to go um, on our select board agenda for next week because to give the approval for the over $10,000 expenditure, well, correct? I, I, yeah. I think the trustees would like to report back as to the funding mechanism. We, we, we're trustees and we, we're responsible for what we spend money on. So this can't just go out the door and you know see in May. It, this is a, I got a question. I know we can't get the names of the people that this is subsidized, but can we get a fifty thousand? This isn't this isn't, this isn't HIPAA. This isn't HIPAA related. Yes, it is. No, can, well, that's we, medical. Yeah. We can't get names of the people, but can we get a fifty thousand foot view of how much money was expended and different generalities on the incomes and stuff like that? Oh, should, I, I think we have to. I think the building inspector has Dylan, to know who this is going to. <laughs> Dylan, do I, we know if you can get to that? Yes. A, yes. A, he has been uh, clear with numbers for Amherst and East Hampton uh, at a 50,000 foot view, just as long okay. as on Amherst. Okay. Well, Dylan, yeah. have you discovered that there are any illegal rentals in Amherst as, you, as you've been going through this? First of all, we have not even in Hadley, there are going to be some some houses that are illegally renting, not to four people, but to seven or nine people. They are violating our zoning bylaws. They're also violating the Board of Health bylaws. And do we know if they're paying their taxes? We haven't even put that in the vote. That is in the proposal. That's their, the uh, proposal from the CPA. And that's the same one we're funding is the the one that was in there. So I have a process question here. So are we going to put this on the select board agenda? If it passes the select board, are we going to bring it back to this committee or are we just going to go with uh, CAPV's uh, criteria and, and you know, someone will report back to us of how it's going to be implemented. Sounds like we have a, a process in place over there. So and, and, and uh, just I want to point out that Dylan and Molly and Joanne and Sean and Mark are all here because they're on the 
Affordable Housing and Economic Development Committee, and that's kind of spearheading this whole project. And so that committee is also overseeing this or taking an active role in the, the process of it. But so, by overseeing it, will you, I know there's one thing you put in, you said you're going to make sure that the landlord is, is up to date on his taxes. What if he isn't? Doesn't qualify? Or you can take that towards the taxes. I don't Gar know. Garnished. Yeah, that was a discussion they wanted us to talk about. And that's why we we're going to send it through the treasurer. Now, what if, what if the Board of Health makes an inspection and uh, you find out that you've got too many students for the uh, septic system to work? Do those people qualify? Or is the, does that landlord qualify? It should not because it's in violation of the Board of Health regulations. Or if there are more people than four living in a house, uh, that's violating zoning. So these boxes should be checked off or it doesn't matter. No, I understand your concern. Um, that's something that we can definitely discuss and talk about with the select board. Yeah, I mean, we obviously don't want to be funding a crack or some illegal or something that's not meeting the codes. I, and I think we can put those check boxes in, as Dylan said. What we're trying to do is show that we're a town with compassion and we can, we want to try and keep people that wanted to be here, but COVID changed their circumstances. We want to help them stay here for a, you know, a period of time until the economy is back on its feet. So well, there's, you know, the, there are a few new people in the audience that haven't heard my speech, you know, as a town of compassion, we have almost 13% of our housing is affordable under state 40B regulations. That is the highest in Happy Valley. Sunderland has 1%. Northampton doesn't have 10%, which is required. Amherst barely has 10%, which is required. South Hadley has 4.5%. Hatfield has 3%. We've done our share. Now, what about these other communities? That's another issue, Joe. I mean, I- yeah. Yeah, It's not another issue, but I, it's overall compassion and for, the, for housing, but it's- I'm, sure I'm qualified because I've never been on SNAP. I've never been in that much need. I've never been at risk of being evicted. So I'm not ready to- Criticize. So, and I really, we, we have I don't, taken I don't a vote. Think we're criticizing. We're it, just it does, pointing out valid concerns. Yeah, uh, it, we've taken know, a vote. Frankly, it does. I'm, vote. I'm one of the most compassionate people out there, and I'll put my uh, my yearly gifts to various organizations in front of anybody here. Okay, so I, I like individuals to take responsibility, and we ask government to do it. This one, I have. This is when I start having a real problem. So we have taken a vote of this board. Did the select board basically ratify it? And uh, then we're waiting town council, um, town council's opinion. Uh, I will work on getting the funding squared away with Tom Reedy's office. We want that, we want to get those funds sooner rather than later anyway, regardless of what we're going to use them for. So I'll proceed on that independently of this vote, just to get the paperwork squared away. Could I uh, ask, uh, Dylan or Molly, if you guys could show up on the 16th at the meeting to answer any questions the select board may have about criteria, uh, how this will be screened by CAPV, just in case that comes up. Yes. Be there with bells on. <laughs> and Dave, can you make sure that the trustees are giving periodic reports because as a trustee I feel that we have to be given periodic reports on what's going on with this money. I think that's a great idea. I mean it'll help us preparing for springtown meeting as well. If there's high demand here and uh, you know this is working then obviously the the warrant article needs to stay on the warrant in the spring and if not then maybe it doesn't. So all right can we get a motion to adjourn? 
Motion to Molly, adjourn. Molly, you, you managed to get two votes out of me recently. The place on Middle Street, not this one. You're, you're a hell of a persuader. <laughs> I'm bracing for the future. I know it won't continue. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. I had a Thanks, motion. Everybody. Good night. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.